Hello everyone, how are you today? I hope you're having a really good day so far. If you are new here, my name's Taylor. I come to you from Baltimore City, Maryland, and on my YouTube channel, I feature content generally focused on knitting and spinning. I do dabble into the self-care realm. I really enjoy fragrances, and I've started playing with makeup, and I love my skincare. So I'm gonna share with you in this video my newest cast on, which I have continued to refer to as the throw back, which it is not. It is the throw over by Andrea Mowry. And I'm going to pack my makeup bag for the weekend. Before we dive into this week's video, I wanted to share two more dossier fragrances I picked up. These were both sent to me for review. These two are both by Mugler, and they are the Ambry Cedarwood, which is their alien inspiration fragrance, and the Angel, um, which they refer to as Gourmand Patchouli. You can see the notes of those there. And I do want to say that I picked up the actual Mugler Alien because I tested this product out in the store and I became obsessed with it. I mean, literally, I was huffing my wrist. I really, really wanted this, but I was not willing to spend the money on it. And two days ago, I was in Nordstrom Rack and I found a gift box of this fragrance at $50, which is half the price of what it was originally and a fraction of the price for the full size bottle. I am excited to compare and contrast the dossier versus the original and I would say they're pretty much the same. I think that at first glance, like when you spray them initially, there's a subtle difference in the like first top note. It's not completely the identical experience but once you it dries down on the skin and you're wearing it, it's the same thing. This is a great deal, totally worth it. I really, really love this fragrance. And with that said, I was not sure if I would like this. I have never smelled Mugler's Angel perfume. And when I say that I'm not sure about this fragrance, I'm really not sure. When I first smelled Gourmand Patchouli, I thought it was absolutely disgusting, like horrifically bad. And then I was like, how can people love this if it's so bad? Like, wh what am I missing? And I still don't know, but I find it incredibly masculine of a fragrance. And there are moments when I'm wearing this where I just, all I smell is like, a bale of hay that's just been pissed on. Like it smells crazy. I don't get it. But then I like, I let it kind of dry down and I wear it for a little, little longer. And I'm like, this is not bad. Like, I don't know what that is where it goes from horrifically bad to I kind of like this. But the fact that I haven't made up my mind yet is what's really intriguing about it and what keeps me spraying it. Like, I just don't know what to think when I smell this fragrance. It's so bizarre. But I wonder if you've ever tried Mugler's Alien perfume. I think it's really interesting. I think that once it dries down, it's it's very beautiful fragrance. It's just very strange. And I don't understand why this is called Angel. And it's so strange when the alien is like amazingly beautiful. Dossier offers classic luxury fragrances at affordable prices. And if you're not happy with your purchase, you can send it back within 30 days with a full refund. I have had to do this before. It was painless and easy. They even pay for return shipping. And if you want to save 10% off your order, you can use the code TaylorOwen10 on top of their welcome offer, on top of their bulk discounts. It's really a great place to find affordable fragrance. One thing I love too is they do take suggestions. And if I were to ask Dossier create a new fragrance. I would hope they come out with more Lula Beau. I love their fragrances and maybe some Diptyque fragrances. I would really love an affordable um, fragrance that is comparable to Tom Ford's Bitter Peach. I really want that fragrance, but I just can't pay for it. I'm going out of town to upstate New York to visit the New York State Sheep and Wool Festival in Rhinebeck, New York. In today's video, I have a new cast on and I'm very excited to share this one with you. First of all, can I just say, this basket is like everything. 
I love this basket. I found it at the thrift store two weeks ago. I paid 75% uh, of $3.99. So I think I paid like two Anyway, um, yeah, so what a deal. I mean, how much do people pay for project bags? Not that you shouldn't spend money on a project bag. I think I think some project bags are worth the expense, but when you can spend two fifty on a basket at the thrift store, like why why would you not? Um Star Baby just snuck by. She is out of frame right now, but she might come and join us today. She is high on Gabba Penton because I took her to the veterinarian today to draw blood. Um, we have to take her every three months to monitor her medication levels, so she is in a mood. Moving on, here we have the throw over, which I have changed my contrast colors. You might have noticed already, I don't know. I decided I was going to swap them out for a few others that I thought really looked good together. And I don't know about you, but I am obsessed with this kind of amber yellow, this kind of, um, here we have it, this like ochre. I don't know what you call this except amber. I am holding that double, it's a fingering weight yarn. So I'm holding that one double. It is a bicycle yarn by Westwool. And I had picked up an extra skein of it when I did my yarn haul for the bubble cardigan. So I, I think that I um, just, you know, made a small skein to hold double with that one. And then, of course, the main color is from Harrisville Designs. It is their Nightshades yarn in the Insomnia colorway. And... Oh, I don't have my other two contrast balls here, but I can talk about them briefly. You'll see them in the first couple rows. And that is some hand-spun Jacob, which if you're not familiar, Jacob is a, it is a sheep, <laughs> but they are the cool sheep with the horns that, like the extra horns that stick straight up. They look very devilish and I don't know, you know, kind of, kind of spooky, kind of spooky, scary um, sheep. And they have a coat that is kind of spotted like a cow. They'll have kind of a, a yellowish, it's never bright white. Um, white sheep are generally bred to be white, so the white is white white. Um, and some white fleeces are whiter than others, but the Jacob white is like a creamy white. It's never that pure white. Um, but they have those big patches of brown. Uh, and so you can, if you find a Jacob fleece, which I, I would try if you could, especially a Jacob blend, because they are a medium kind of coarser, not coarse, but they are not a fine wool. Um, but I find that medium wools are more fun to wash and prepare, especially if they're nice and, and soft for their grade. Um, they can be a really, really nice project spin. This fleece came to me from a Ravelrier in the area who was clearing out a space in her home to just acquire more things up her alley. And she had purchased this Jacob fleece at a festival and she had it machine prepared, um, I think combed. It was machine combed into like a, it's not really roving. It wasn't like pencil roving. It is um, kind of like big sheets of like loose batting. And she let me take it home, like completely for free, which was like so generous of her. And I surprised her with a, a hand spun skein of yarn that she was really, you know, happy to receive. But I, I, from the, the grace and the generosity of a neighbor who actually doesn't live that far from where I live now, um, she gave me that fleece and I spun it into a two ply. This is the same yarn that I spun my feral shawl. So it's just a little remnant skein I have. And then you can probably see that between that gorgeous warm gray and that ambery yellow, I have a contrast color tucked between them that is a two ply marled yarn of both of those colors, a gray and a yellow. So I've basically chosen three colors that are really just two colors, and the middle third color is a combination of the two, which I feel like gives a really nice kind of gradient effect for using non-marled 
yarns. So if you are familiar with either the throwback or the throwover, you know that Andrea uses um, marled yarns, or I should say barber pulled yarns, for all three contrast colors. And so they really blend together in a way that you can't tell one apart from the next. Um, that's really nice and I like that, but I had a really hard time spinning my own fiber into yarn for this project. I just can't spin a worsted weight quite yet. I've really stopped spinning. Uh, I can't say that, I mean, I just spun a sweater quantity. <laughs> But I haven't been spinning very much the last couple of years. It really fell to the back burner. And I'm not gifted enough with the time I need, I think, to practice spinning different weights of yarn. So I accidentally spun a fingering weight. I needed a worsted. And I found an alternative that I think really, really works for me. And ever since last Rhinebeck, when I saw a knitter wearing a sweater that was a dark black color. It could have been a charcoal, but it was like a dark main color with the gold yellow as like a contrast. I was like, ooh, that's striking. And I love that so much. And so when I put these three together as contrast colors for this main color, I was just really excited to cast on. And I worked all of this in one night. And I'm not exaggerating it. So I was so quick to get this far in this project that I forgot to add the short rows I was planning to add before working the color work because I have heard some knitters are not in love with the yoke fit because I think that the shaping comes in after the color work which is sort of lower like at the armpit level to lift the back of the sweater up a little higher for the yoke to kind of not choke you at the neck. I think a lot of Andrea's yoked sweaters are quite high on the neck which is not uncomfortable. I think it, it's actually nice to have some coverage there in the winter months, especially when you know, you're wearing a worsted weight sweater that's held double. It's quite a thick garment, so it's more of a winter seasonal only garment. I don't hate that it's going to sit high up on the neck at all. I'm, I'm really pleased with that, but I do like to make sure that I'm guaranteeing that it's not going to ride up on the throat. And I planned to add short rows and I completely forgot. But to me, it's not worth ripping back for. If other people have made this garment without them, I can too. And it's not part of the pattern. So, so far I have been knitting the size two uh, according to instructions. And I hope that it blocks out to wear nicely against the front of the neck. So this is really exciting to me. I'm going to pack this for the weekend. I don't know how much I'm going to get done on it, but I also have a hat project I've been working on. I have been knitting this linked hat pattern in the evening hours on weekdays. You can see that it is a two by four rib. So when you fold it over, it has this nice contrast. It looks like way more complicated than it is. And I think that's a really cool element to the design of this hat. Um, it is cabled. I'm about to start the cables now, so this is where I have to stop and read instructions. So <sighs> the mindlessness of this project is over, and I'm about to get complicated here. And I'm thinking about taking this for the weekend as well. This might be the project that I carry around because once I do a cable row, all I have to do is knit the knits and purl the pearls for a few rounds before I have to do the next cable row. So this is actually a pretty decent traveling project because it's nice and light. It'll fit in pretty much any bag and I can whip it out at most instances whenever. I am working on this project using another Harrisville Designs yarn that I picked up at the same time in recent weeks and this is their yarn Sheer. I think they just came out with a new one that I'm excited to see in person. I don't know if I'm gonna buy any yarn at Rhinebeck while I'm there, to be honest. I have so much yarn and so much fiber and so much to work through, um, but there is one thing that I'm looking for. Two things, three things. <laughs> I am hoping to purchase a fleece that I'm going to split with one of my viewers, and I'm really excited about that. So I will be bringing home half of a fleece and I can show you a little bit of content on how I clean and process fiber. And then I also want to pick up, I saw in a video, I was watching um, some past Rhinebeck vlogs on YouTube. I was just kind of getting in the mood for Rhinebeck and I saw someone show in a, in a brief clip 
this boucle yarn and I was like ooh if there's any place to find boucle yarn it is at Rhinebeck and I am on the hunt for a gorgeous boucle yarn equaling about 90 grams of lace weight so that might be I think I could get away with two skeins of fingering weight boucle yarn um, whatever that means boucle it probably doesn't equal fingering or decay. It, it probably just is what it is. So I need to find out the yardage of Andrea's um, new pattern for the contrast color. And I'm going to find a boucle yarn to knit the collar to that, I think. If I find it, I find it. If I don't, I don't. But I'm looking for a boucle yarn. And if you're going to the festival and you find a boucle yarn, just message me on Instagram and tell me what, what booth you're in because I need I need that boucle. I want a boucle shawl collar for the big cozy cardigan by Andrea Mowry. That is my plan. Unless I stick with what I've got, which maybe I will, I don't know. But the third thing I'm thinking about buying is going to be a braid of fiber. I would very much like to spin a bright braid of fiber. I want that barber pulled hand spun skein in my stash. I just, I would very much like to have that. And I'm looking for a bright braid that has oranges and amber and yellow, something maybe with some black in it, something that's very, very, very autumnal. I want the Hudson Valley in a braid. And I hope someone delivers that to Rhinebeck because I never see orange braids of fiber. I've never seen I mean, that's probably not true, but every time I scope the spin cycle email, all I see is pink and blue and pastel. And I just don't do those hues. I don't do blue. I don't do pink. I just feel the way that I feel and that's good enough for me. I would love an orange and yellow braid of fiber um, to spin into that barber pulled yarn that everyone is working with right now. So those are my goals. That is what I hope to accomplish while shopping this weekend. And I want to thank you so much for joining me and just listening to my thoughts. Now, this is a, this is a fun hack. If you have to do an activity, um, do something else. What? I have used this not this bottle because I've repurchased it maybe half a dozen times, but I have used this product on my face since high school. So for maybe 20 years, I think, maybe right when they came out with this, I think I purchased one of their sampler boxes of all their different BB creams to try them out, see which one worked best. This one worked best for me, and I like that it has extra SPF, and it's very much like gray. I have somewhat gray skin tone and I mean you might call that cool or something I don't know it's kind of pinky but it's like a very gray color and it's quite luminous um, it's easiest applied with my fingers which I like um, for the longest time I never even used brushes on the face um, and then I adopted the beauty blender and I do like that approach too. Um, but what I've been using more recently, and I discovered this through YouTube and people reviewing it, was Hourglass New Ambient Glow Foundation. I picked this up in shade 5, which is light neutral. And if you compare these colors, they are very different. Um, this is far more yellow. Like, whoa. That is a totally different face. And you see how gray this is next to this one. I mean, to me, that is not neutral. To me, that is very yellow. And I think yellow is warm and pinky is cool. And I don't know that I have cool or warm undertones. I think I have a strange combination um, of both where I might have kind of a pale olive skin tone with maybe cool like olive skin tone with like cool undertones maybe because this does match my face much better than anything else. And there's literally nothing on the market that is this gray. It's crazy. Um, so, and that actually looks like it matches my hand better, but this looks yellow on my face. 
Um, and the warm, of course, I never even tried because it's way, I mean, probably maybe too peach color, but this is what I'm working with right now in my stash of products. So I went to Ulta yesterday because I was thinking if this product, which was like, I bought it at 10% off through the Hourglass website, so I can't really return it easily like I would at Ulta or Sephora if I bought it there. Um, so I went to Ulta and I picked up a lavender tinted primer with the hope that I could kind of neutralize that yellow a little bit. And I don't know if this is going to work on top of it. Yeah, I don't know what difference that's supposed to make. Honestly, I don't think that the lavender color is concentrated enough. Oh, that's a good catch. Within the product to really make any difference. I am simply not educated enough on anything at all to be a source of information on what to do or what to buy. <laughs> but this seems like a really nice primer. Um, I did pick up another primer recently that I love, love, love. And that is Cali Ray's So Blown. Now this is a mattifying primer. And of course you apply primer before your makeup. Um, and I'm running out of space on my hand here. But this primer, it's like so mattifying and it's so smooth and it really does sink in like it doesn't feel like it's leaving a wet surface where things kind of smear around which I feel like this primer um, I can't mix it into the foundation like I wanted to in order to change the color that's just not ever gonna work um, and I feel like the primer blended with the product it doesn't allow the product to dry down it's just too like wet or something. So I did have better success this morning applying the primer first, letting that settle, and then applying the makeup, which of course is how you're supposed to utilize a primer. But I couldn't find a single product in the Ulta store that was a tone adjusting lavender product. I know that they have one on their website. It wasn't in the store and I needed it now. So that is my experience with the number five hourglass foundation it is a really nice foundation it does settle into pores um, even with a primer it'll still settle into pores because it has it I know it's called ambient light or ambient glow but it really is sort of a mattifying and matte like product it's not it's not a natural dewy finish product um, like this is. This is like shiny, shiny shine. Like you really have to apply powder unless you want to look shiny with this. And I feel torn because um, this really blends seamlessly into my natural skin tone and I, I don't think I look bad wearing it. However, it does kind of move throughout the day and when I'm wearing this product, if I have on any eye makeup at all, it will kind of smear down and around my face. Um, and I feel like my blush or contour, if I'm wearing that with it, will kind of slip and slide around. Um, so it's not the most uh, long wearing product in the least, um, but it, it looks really nice. And then this one will wear much better over time, especially with the right primer, which I feel like this one works great. And I, I do feel like I need to use a primer with this because it does settle into pores and I do have somewhat large pores so i'm going to i think pack both primers this one to kind of fill in my t-zone or i have deeper pores than other areas and then this one i think on top of it to neutralize the face which feels silly to pack two primers when i have so many samples like i have i have more primer samples than anything and I just don't like any one of them enough to pack it. Actually, I think I liked this. I just don't know how well it will keep my makeup in place throughout the day. The same with this one. I think this one's good. I would not recommend this primer. This primer pills, which is like the exact opposite of the thing you want from a primer. Like you never want that. 
And I don't know. I think the same thing about this. I just don't have a lot of faith in the Milk brand, to be honest. The two full-size primers I have in my stash are like fine. They're not great. I just don't buy Bobbi Brown anymore. I, I used to, and I'm never wowed by their stuff. In fact, I still have. I've been holding on to this. I just got foundation all over it. I've been holding on to this product to tell you all not to buy this. It is the most overpriced and underperforming foundation I've ever experienced in my entire life. And I hated it. First of all, what is this applicator? It is literally a straw. Um, it looks to be about the exact same shade as my hourglass. So I had kind of the same issue matching it. That's that. And I decided I'm packing this, this, and this. Now, I'm gonna leave you home. I'm gonna go wash my hands really quick. Right, I'm gonna dump everything out and repack what I'm going to bring and I don't think everything's gonna fit. Okay, so I have the Beauty Blender for that application. Next, I usually apply a contour. I've been loving the Fenty Beauty Amber number 10. This is also very cool, which I like in a contour um, because otherwise it's a bronzer and it'll look way too orange if it's not very cool. I think it blends easy. I've heard people complain online about how it doesn't blend, but I think it blends pretty well, but what do I know? Then I do apply a bronzer. I think I'm packing the Charlotte Tilbury mini bronzer and highlighter, and that will kind of kill two birds. The only other bronzer I have is matte, and it's also from Fenty, um, but this highlighter is kind of golden very pretty. I think I might only pack this. I was thinking about packing my new Hourglass palette I just bought on sale. Sephora had a 20% off friends and family event and I bought this um, on impulse and it's obviously six shades of hello. So these are two finishing powders. They're like brightening powders here and here. Very subtle difference between those. So you can see that they do brighten the face. I haven't figured out which brush works best for these. And these blushes, they look very similar in the compact and they look, I think, identical on the face, which, I mean, what do I really know? I, I don't know. Um, this one is a little bit more peachy and a little warm. And this one is a tad bit cooler. In fact, this one I think might be a little bit more subtle than this one, which you wouldn't think just by looking at it. But I think it's a little bit easier to blend out. And then there are two highlighters. This one is more subtle and this one is a strobe highlighter so it's like very bright and this one is obviously the most similar to the Charlotte Tilbury like they are sisters they are friends so I think I might mm, I don't know what to do because this is quite large this is quite small so this is better for travel, but I need a blush. And I was going to pack my Charlotte Tilbury blush, which I purchased at the recommendation, not personal, but on, um, on Michelle Wong's YouTube channel. She talked about this being one of her favorite blushes of all time. It's the color First Love by Charlotte Tilbury. And when I was shopping her little station in Sephora, I thought this is not gonna show up on me at all, but it is the most gorgeous natural flush of color. 
I would recommend this shade of blush to any light or fair skinned person. This blush is amazing. I feel like this packaging is stuck in like the 80s, which I love personally, but it clashes with like all of my other packaging. I kind of like all of my stuff to match. And so that kind of bothers me a little bit. Like <laughs> upgrade your blush girl because it looks dated. I think I'm going to bring all of them because I am that girl. And I need another makeup bag. Um, let's see here. Okay. This I don't know why I packed because I'm bringing my beauty blender so I can unpack that. This Fenty powder, um, this is the butter color. This is the best finishing powder I've ever used. I love this product. Um, it, like any powder, does make my face look dry. So if, if you know of a powder that does not make your under eyes look crepey and dry, please let me know in a comment below. But so far, this is the most finely milled powder I've ever tried. Uh, next to the Laura Mercier, everyone talks about this. This is translucent. And this is a sample that is perfect for travel because it's like literally all I need and more. So this is going with me. This can go back in the drawer. And then I have my Lancome Tint Doll Ultra Wear All Over Concealer in the color 90. I think it's the lightest shade that they make. And this concealer is phenomenal. It wears very well, but here's my complaint. When you open it up, you have to be so careful because if you do it too fast, the tiniest bit of product will fly somewhere and you can get it on your clothes very easily. But other than that, the doe foot is really nice. I've never seen or used a doe foot that is quite this large. And I do find it applies the product very well. So I really have liked this. And I have my Stila Kitten. Now I shouldn't even be packing this because it's so delicate, but this is what I apply in the corner of my eye. And it is like high impact shine, like more than anything ever. So I don't know. I wonder if I can get away with one of my other highlighters. Do you see how flaky this is? It has been that way as long as I've ever had it. It's just so shiny. I think I'm going to leave this home because I would hate for something to happen to her. So I'm going to leave her home. I was going to pack Patrick Ta's brow like pomade gel uh, because I did purchase the trial size and it's nice and small, but I don't think I like it. And I think I'm going to return it because I think that the Rare Beauty brow gel works a lot better. Um, I did a, a trial comparison. One day I applied this and then the other day, I mean the same day, I applied this on the other brow to see which ones kept my hairs in place longer. And this really did perform well. The difference is that this is tinted. I purchased this in Brown Harmony, which is a cool brown. So it is nice and light. It's not too dry, um, but it's tinted. So that does change the kind of use of it. I think my brows, each of them really did look different the day that I did that comparison. Um, but this brush, it's just a little too like heavy handed and it's just a tiny bit darker than the other one that I'm planning to pack, which I haven't shown you yet, is um, Morphe's like, I think I paid like $3 for this product. Um, so it's very affordable and it's very hard and it does warm up as you apply it. As you can see, I, I applied it a moment ago. Um, but the fact that it's a smaller Thing, it's just easier to apply. I find that when I apply the Rare Beauty brow pen, my brows just look a little too bold and I haven't gotten the hang of using this stick yet. So I'm really loving the micro tip one, but this um, gel is incredible. I love that a lot. And the last two products I think that I need are my liquid liner. I am obsessed with Stila's dual ended liquid liner because for just a few extra dollars, you get double the product and you get two ends. So it lasts twice as long, although they do expire at the same time if you're using them simultaneously. So there is that to think about. But if you wear liquid liner and you haven't tried this, I would definitely recommend it. It's supposed to stay all day. It says that it's waterproof. I think it does a decent job 
staying in place more than any other liquid liner I've used. And I find it's the most easy to apply, especially with the micro tip. So this is the normal, this is the normal tip. And then the micro tip makes the inner corner of the eye like actually able to, like I could not do my eyeliner without this tip. Um, there's just no way, I'm not that good at it. And my absolute favorite mascara of all time is it Cosmetics Superhero. This is a brand new tube I just cracked open. Um, there's nothing special about the applicator. It's just a basic applicator. And the product itself is incredible. It is the best mascara in terms of volume, length, and curl. I have pretty weak lashes. They're not full. They're not long. They sit pretty flat. And even without curling my eyelashes, this mascara will lift them up and they will stay there. I feel like I can build this mascara very easily and with a single coat. And I find that as you continue to use it and it dries out a little bit, as most mascaras do, it only looks better and better. The lashes look a little bit more full. It never gives you that like chunky tip at the end of your lash like I get with every other mascara I've been trying. Um, I will say in terms of other mascaras that I've used, um, one is from Lancome. It's the Monsieur Big and this is the waterproof version. This is a fine mascara. It works well. It's nowhere near as volumizing as this one but it does give you a little bit of length and it's a nice color and it, you know, doesn't run down my face. I have been using mascara by Cali Ray. I picked this up to get free shipping on my primer order from their website with a slight discount and I would not recommend this. I don't like it. I find like I get it everywhere on my face. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's me. I'm sure it's me. It's not the applicator. I tend to get mascara all over my face. I use a little wet Q-tip to touch up the areas I get mascara all over. Um, but this does not build well. Um, it's a good natural lash. Like if you just want a super natural look where you look like you're wearing no makeup and no mascara, you can apply a light coat of this. But if you're trying to apply a nice even coat to amplify your lashes and make them look, you know, better than normal, then this is not it. Like they will clump together. They will clump together in the most awkward way where they're uneven and, and pointed in strange directions. I don't like this. This is the one. This is the only one. And this is literally the only mascara I might ever buy ever again. Like I will just continue to buy this one mascara. And if I ever try any other mascara, it's because I got it for free. I already know this one works and this one is my favorite. So lip products, I am obsessed with Rare Beauty's lip liners. I think that they're really pretty. There's so many colors. I picked up, I think this one is called Talented. Yep. And they have a little built-in sharpener in the end, which is cool, but I know I don't use the sharpener. I feel like it's wasteful. I just make do with the end that I have. I've also been really enjoying the Rare Beauty lip gloss. I got this as a part of a little gift box when I did a Sephora haul with the friends and family discount. It's super <sighs> everything. It's moisturizing. Like it, it really lasts. Like for a lip gloss, it stays on the lips for hours. I remember at work the other day, it was, I think, 12 o'clock and I could still feel the lip gloss on my lips. Really moisturizing. The color fades dramatically. Like you'll apply it and you'll see that intense color and then the color will quickly dissipate, but the moisture really stays in place. It kind of feels like Vaseline, like it's very rich. And I think the last thing are my brushes. So um, I have my Beauty Blender, my contour brush. This one's from e.l.f. It was like maybe $8. I like it a lot. It works well for me. I need my blush brush. This is also e.l.f. It works fine. I think I want another fancier blush brush, but this one works great for what I need it to do. And this is the brush I've been using from, who makes these brushes? They're pretty popular, I forget. You'll find them. If you're looking for cheap brushes online or in store, these, I mean, they look like this. You'll see them everywhere and they're really affordable. This is the powder brush I use to apply powder just under my eyes. 
Um, but, and I'm going to bring this because that's what I have been using it for and I'll feel like I miss it if I don't have it. This I've been using to highlight the face because it's nice and small and I think I was going to use this for my powder but I find that I'm just not good enough at applying makeup to know how to use this brush best because I feel like I just get powder everywhere and it's just not necessary and my skin is somewhat dry so I would just rather keep the powder only where I want it and not everywhere else so I might leave this home and then this is the brush that I use I got this for free in an order it has a cute little gemstone on it but this is the brush I use to kind of go over my entire face with no product to kind of blend everything out make it look more natural less harsh and kind of lift away some of the powder because I do feel like the powder is very very drying to the face so I kind of un unapply my makeup through this brush and I'm going to give her a nice little wash before the weekend so she is clean and ready and then this is the brush I've been using to apply uh, highlighter at the inner corner of my eyes so I'm going to bring her and tweezers because who doesn't need tweezers in fact I need to tweeze before I go so there's that um this is just a sample it's been sitting around for too long and that's it that's what I'm going to pack to Rainbeck. I think I need another bag.